What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Team Soul Circus live video. Today, we're going to go over Fire King Complete Combo Guide. So, with a new edition of this card here, Fire King Cordier Luxanix, uh, it's going to be giving the deck a bunch of little combos. No, this is card's not a common. I printed this off to show you guys the combo video. Sneak release releases tomorrow, so we'll try to get our hands on this card. Uh, this card has a really cool effect. When it's normal, it's push someone, you can destroy one other fire monster in your hand or face up field, and you can add one of the attribute, you know, Wing Beast, Beast, or Beast Warrior. And then, if it's destroyed, you send out the old chicken from the deck. Uh, it's going to be able to help out giving you a one card combo as well as being a blast 1.2 card combo being also a very interrupted card uh, so i want to be showing you guys the combos with this deck this deck's going to be a very popular rogue deck option before we dive in don't forget to like comment shout i'll be showing you guys the, the kind of the end pieces so we're going to start off with the most notable we're going to have arvada so arvada is your monster negate and then when it's destroyed it's going to be able to summon back one from the graveyard uh, our fire king card and then when it's at, during the end phase it'll get destroyed as well which is important to note then you have a little bit less of popular one. We have Ring Valley. This is going to be the spell and trap and gate and get summon itself out from the hand. Well, this one cannot. Then, of course, you have your Garunix. This is going to be whenever a card's destroyed a fire, you can summon itself out and then destroy a fire from the deck, which normally ends up going with a Kirin. So you have like a monster gate, a spell and trap and gate, a kind of like a removal that comes itself out. Then on summon, it destroys normally the Kirin, which then can summon out another fire from the graveyard uh, and then destroy a card in destroy the card on the field which is important it can be any card and it's non-targeting which is also very important and then when this card is destroyed uh you get to i guess that's what happens but you can also tag out from the hand with this helping you dodge like impairment veiler which is important as well and then you have the sanctuary which gets you into uh this card here which is just a oh, dark hole other than for itself on summon which is going to allow you to do that during your opponent's turn when they special summon a monster sometimes we have the fire king skyburn uh, this is going to pop car equal cards, so you can pop like two to pop two. Just important to note that it is an option as well. And then that's it for the main deck cards. For the extra deck cards, you have obviously, we mentioned it earlier, the Dark Hole. And then when this card is destroyed, it also summons out the number of material it had. So if you destroy it while it has two, it summons two from the grave, which is important. You have a number 38. You can also play a 90 as well. We're not playing it in this build. We're not going to show you guys off. Then we have the Amble Whale, which can be two triggers. You normally leave it on the field and destroy it with the Arvada. A Princess in the Graveyard, and then an IP or an SP. And that's going to be kind of really it for your uh, interactions. Uh, so that's like pretty simple for all these cards here. If you know how they work, you'll kind of know how the deck works. If you guys want to know how to beat the deck, I can also do a video on that. Uh, but we're just going to be showing you guys off stuff, and we're going to dive on into the first combo. So for the first combo here, you're going to meet one of the Cordier as well as any Fire Monster. We're going to call Ash Blossoms just so you can add it back. Uh, when you add any other card like Kieran in the next combo, I'll show you guys what happens when you add Kieran to this combo. But it's going to be the 1.5 card combo as long as you have a fire. Uh, Ash is going to be the worst one. I just want to show you guys like why you can do it. So we're going to normal summon, act for the effect, destroying the Ash. We're going to then resolve searching for a Ponix. A Ponix on resolution can activate because it is private hand knowledge, which can then, on resolution, it can destroy itself. And then it's going to act with the effect searching us for the Fire King Sanctuary. If you have the Sanctuary, you can also search for the Fire King Island. There's going to be another form of interruption, which is going to be nice. So then act with the effect, placing the island onto the field. And then we can act with the island effect, destroying the, this one here. And then we're going to act with the, we're going to search off the island for a copy of Garunix. And then we have two triggers. We can go chain link one, Garunix chain link two, the, this, the summon out, this one from the deck as well. And then on summon, we're going to act with the Garunix. Because we don't have access to our Vada, we're going to destroy the Arvada from the deck. Which can then activate bringing back out the copy of the uh, Cordier. So we have four bodies on the field. This is, would be a very nice time for Nibiru, uh, but we're going to pretend our opponent just doesn't have it. Now you can link any two bodies that is not Ponix away for a copy of the Sunlight Wolf. And then we're going to link away the Sunlight Wolf here, or we're going to link away the Ponix underneath the Sunlight Wolf for an Anima. Sunlight Wolf will then activate, adding us back the copy of Ash Blossom to our hand. So now we have our Ash or the Fire that we ended up discarding earlier back then we can link these two away for the princess princess can then bring back out the arvada then we can link these two away for our copy of amble whale so now during our opponent's turn we have an arvada which can destroy the amble whale which can then activate the effect of the garunix as well uh, and then the amble whale can summon out the sunlight wolf so that when you overlay later you can go into the copy of, of the Thing. So I'll just kind of show you guys the interaction points, which I should just mention. So whenever your opponent activates a monster, we're going to use Ash as number one. So we have Ash gone already. Arvada is going to be number two, destroying this. And then we're going to be able to trigger the Amboil to summon back out the Sunlight Wolf, as well as the Grunix. 
So we're going to be negating a monster. We have Ash as well. We're going to see the Grooming's going to be summoning, activating the effect, destroying the Kieran from the deck. Kieran will then act activate, summoning the uh, Mechanics, destroying a card on our opponent's side of the field. That's now going to be number three. We're going to go Oil Canics, destroying the Arvada to search. We're going to search for another Kieran. And then we're going to see Arvada going to activate to summon the... I mean, we can summon really whatever we want to. We can summon out the Ponix. Ponix will then be able to trigger, searching us for the Skyburn. So now we have the Kieran and the Skyburn. We're still in three interactions. And then whenever we want to, we can activate a Kieran, destroying the uh, little sticks here, which is not going to be the best, obviously, option for us to do, but we still have that ability. Or you can just leave this on the field. And then uh, whenever your opponent does anything, you can also print us. So we have like this destruction, and then we can go up into the uh, hazy up in here underneath. This is going to activate the effect to add back the Kieran that we had already used in the graveyard. So we still have our add back. We have another destruction that's gonna blow up the entire field, bringing us to four. Ponix will then also trigger in the standby phase to add that back as well, which is important to note. And then we still have the Amber Whale, which did trigger, because it destroyed a Sunlight Wolf, so that's gonna be number five. And then we have the Princess as well, which can then destroy these two, or can destroy this and one of your points. So number six, summon itself out. Then we're gonna be seeing the uh, Garun is going to then activate once again, bringing out different bodies. We could bring this out and bring out uh, the Arvada. It doesn't really matter what we bring out here. And then when this gets destroyed, um, it's going to be also bringing out another body as well. So we have here, we have Skyburn, we have a Kieran, we have Princess, uh, and we have like a bunch of follow-up. And if during the standby phase, we're going to be seeing the Ponix add itself back. And so at this point, we have like three bodies on the field. We've already, we already blown up their entire field with Dark Hole. We've ashed them. We've blown up two of their cards. Uh, and then th a third with this as well. We've monster negated. Like we have so many different interactions here and we still have all these cards. And this is all off of one card uh, with another discard, which you can see that we have like, the ability to add back the fires with some wolf. So it's very important like, to see that there's, there's so many power you can do when you start adding different cards to your combo, uh, which is kind of why this card is just so busted. Uh, in this combo. Anyways, now for the second combo. For the second combo, we're going to be showing you guys the Cordier as well as the Kieran. So for this combo, it's not going to lose to Imperm like before. You would just Imperm the copy of Arvada and the game would be kind of over. This way, there's going to be nothing that really they can stop you on the fault, like on the on their turn, which is going to be quite nice. But we're going to be just normal summoning out this once again, activating the effect, destroying the Kieran, searching for Ponix. Ponix will then trigger. We don't activate the Kieran here. We don't need to. We're not going to activate it this turn. Uh, to sum this out. This is going to search once again for Sanctuary. Place Sanctuary, place Island, Island's going to destroy, and it's going to activate the, or we're going to search for the Grunix, and then we're going to once again, Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, summon out, oh, wrong card here, my bad, summon out the Grunix OG, and then the other Grunix, Grunix going to then activate the effect, and before we had the, we had no Arvada, uh, but we didn't have a Kieran as well, so sometimes you would be wanting to destroy the Kieran in the deck, so you could actually summon out one, but here we're going to send the copy of Arvada, so now we have all three, or all names other than Rangbali in rotation. So we're going to destroy the uh, Arvada, and we're going to activate the effect, summoning back out the uh, Cordier here. And you can link away into any two bodies, so like it does not really matter what we link away into. We're going to link up into the Sunlight Wolf, and then we're going to link up into the IP. So this is going to be different because now we're going to be able to bring back a better body, not just a Sunlight Wolf for follow-up. We're going to be able to bring back the IP here. Uh, during the amb when the Amble gets destroyed. So we'll have another big version of uh, interaction here. Uh, so then we're going to see Sunlight Wolf adding us back the Kieran. If you have the Kieran, you can really add back whatever else you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we're going to link these two up into the Amble Whale. So now, or no, my bad. We're going to go up into Princess. Princess is going to activate, bring it any body. does not matter with some of the Arvada. And then we're going to link these two away for the Amber Whale. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. So we now have the, you, I mean, you can go right up into the uh, Amber Whale if you want to, but you want to have Princess in the Grave all the time. So you definitely just should link up into it for, uh, just to have it in the Grave, right? It doesn't really do anything other than provide you with an extra summon, but you're way past Nib and your opponent's not going to go to a Princess before the Nibiru you anyways. So now, you know, you have an Amber Whale and this is going to be it for your turn. 
which sounds pretty crazy, but you know, we have the Kirin, which can then activate the effect. Destroy the Amber Whale, Amber Whale will then activate, as well as the Garunix. Summon out the, the uh, IP, summon out the Garunix. Garunix will then activate, destroying the Kirin. Kirin will then activate, destroying one card on the field, and then being able to bring out the Arvada. And so, right now, we've already destroyed one card on the field uh, with the Arvada. Uh, we have the Amble Whale, which can then activate the effects in the Graver when we destroy another card as well, which is important to note. Uh, but, like, here we can go... Like, we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep the Arvada, or I guess it kind of depends on, like, what you want to go for. Depending on what your opponent does or else you have, you know, if you have another Fire in hand, Arvada can negate by destroying. But we can go IP into an SP, getting rid of another card. So this is going to be the second. And then we have SP banishing, uh, or Tega at some point, can be the third interruption, getting rid of one more monster. And then if they continue to summon, we can once again go into the uh, High Spear, whatever, the he Hie, or whatever it's called, the Big Garunix, and then destroy all the cards on the field as another Dark Hole. And then SP will come back once again, and if they do... You know, if they do choose to try to battle over the SP, we're going to have the Amber Whale effect to destroy. And then we also have the uh, Princess, which can then bring itself back, destroying this, which can then summon out two more bodies once again. Uh, you know, if we didn't go with the Arvada negate, we can bring back the Arvada, and we can bring back the Ponix. And then whenever our opponent does anything, we can Arvada negate, um, destroy the Ponix. Ponix would then be able to search, by the way, searching for the Skyburn. So we have the sky burn and pawning during the standby phase will be able to bring itself back once again. So there's so many different layers of interruptions that's going to be really good with this deck because like you can see that nothing really kind of stops us other than like random cards like Imperm and then Ash. But we have versions of like we have cards that we can dodge Imperm with like Kieran to kind of help play us through. And then Ash, obviously, like these are just one card combos on the brand new card here, uh, which is going to be like pretty nice. But there's just different spots you can hit now. Like do you hit the island, do you hit the uh, Cordier, who knows, depending on what you have, it obviously is not going to be very good, uh, but just like kind of important to note. Like, there's different layers of interaction where like a lot of decks just lose a Dark Ruler no more, uh, where this deck just does not. So now moving on to the next combo. showed you guys a few of the Cordier combos. Uh, now we're going to be showing you guys some of the old Ponix combos. So this could be just a one card combo. Normal summon Ponix, activate the effect, search for Sanctuary, replace Sanctuary, which then places Island. Island destroys the Ponix. And then we're going to search for the Grunix. Grunix will then be able to summon itself out, activating the effect, destroying from the deck. We're going to destroy a copy of Baron. Now, this is going to be the pretty basic combo. You don't do this all the time. It's obviously the one card worst combo in our deck. This is going to be a possible that you can do. So we just here we destroyed the Barong, and then, then we're going to just pass turn. Not that great, not amazing, but during the standby phase, we're going to chain like one Barong, chain like two Ponix, add itself back to hand. It's going to search for the Kirin. Now, during the main phase, whenever we want to, we can activate the Kirin, destroy the Ponix, summoning itself out. And when our opponent tries to do any special summons, we can then immediately go up into uh, the copy of the Guru Eternity and just essentially destroy the board. Uh, then again, once during the standby phase, Ponix will then trigger, bringing itself back to the hand, and you have another combo for the next turn. So like, this is kind of all that you really have. Obviously, you know, if this gets destroyed, you can summon back these two or summon whatever else you want. You know, summoning this back, maybe the copy of the Kirin, and then Ponix will then trigger. But there's just so many different stuff you can do for this deck. But like, it's just like the kind of like the worst card combo. And now I'll be showing you guys like Ponix plus either Sanctuary or Skyburn. Doesn't really matter which one it is. I'm just gonna be showing you guys a different combo. So, like I mentioned here, we're gonna pretend it's Sanctuary and the Ponix. We're gonna normal summon the Ponix once again, activating the effect and search for your other copy. Uh, it's gonna be just providing you another layer of interruption by being able to destroy um, the Eternity. We're then going to play this to place the island on the field. Once again, destroying the Ponix with the island, searching for the Garunix. Garunix will then trigger, summoning itself out, activating, destroying the Kirin, or I guess, my bad. In this case, we'll be destroying the copy of Baron once again. Then we just set this and we pass our turn. So once again, during standby phase, we're going to be seeing Chainlink 1 Baron, Chainlink 2 Ponix, adding back to the hand and searching for the Kirin. And then we can go Kieran once again, destroying the Ponix, summing itself out. And when our opponent does anything, we overlay. And then we destroy the field. So, same combo as last time, but now also when we have any interruption, we want to destroy one other card on the field. We can go Skyburn, target, target their opponent's card, destroying that. 
This will then be able to trigger because it's in the graveyard destroyed. Uh, we'll be able to trigger summoning two different bodies. So we can summon once again the Garunix. And we can summon with the Ponix here. So then we're going to be able to see both these cards trigger, being able to search. You can search for another Skyburn or a Circle in this case. We are playing the Circle. And then the Garunix will then be able to activate destroying another card. So we're going to destroy the copy of Arvada here from the deck. And then Arvada will be able to trigger to bring out a Barong, which will then have to destroy itself during the standby phase, uh, or during the end phase here. We could also summon out the copy of Kieran if you wanted to, as well, definitely an option that you can do. Uh, but it's all the kind of the patterns that you have in your hand. If you have another copy of Kieran in the hand, then you're gonna cook really well, be able to play through different stuff. Uh, but then they're in like the end phase, our is gonna activate destroying the Barong. And then you can just pass turn on this. You know, We could have also, if you wanted to, summoned out Instead of the Barong, the copy of Kieran. Then when Kieran gets destroyed, it summons up the copy of Arvada. So you have like a monster negate that's ready for you at all times uh, by bringing back the, the Arvada. If you destroy the Barong there, instead by summoning the Ar destroying the, my bad. If you destroy the Arvada and summon out the Barong, Barong will get you a search for whatever card else you need. You have Ponix people to search you for the Fire King or the Circle here. And then you also have the Island to destroy any of your cards to be able to search for another one as well. Uh, so like you're really set up very nicely here. Uh, be able to pop two of your opponent's cards, essentially dark hole the board, and then also having a monster gate as well. Can come up really nicely. That's obviously all off the one card Ponix. This is going to be a three card combo. It's going to be like Ponix, Skyburn, or Sanctuary, and then Aravada. If it doesn't have the Aravada, it can also be a copy of Kieran or the Gabrunix. It doesn't necessarily really matter. It's just going to be using the Aravada here uh, for part of the combo. So we're going to normal summon the Ponix once again, searching for Sanctuary. Place Sanctuary, place in the island. Island's going to destroy the Ponix. Searching for Grunix. If you have Grunix, you can search for the Kieran here. You just want to have all three of these in rotation, which is very important uh, to note. These three are going to be your big three, which is going to be just able to activate. So we're going to search for the Grunix here, summing itself out, activating the effect, destroying the Kieran from the deck. Kieran will then activate something from the hand, summon out the Arvada. So this doesn't look like a, that much of an end board, but we're going to be having a monster gate. We can set this as well. And then we're going to pass turn on this. So looking at this board, it kind of sucks. But during our opponent's turn, we're going to have a negate with the Arvada, destroying the copy of Karunix. And then when your opponent acts with any card or effect, we can then, uh, or you anything you want to pop, we can go Skyburn, destroying the Arvada, and pop their card on the field. And then we're going to have Arvada and then Garunix as well to summon out. We're going to summon out these two. And then Garunix will then be able to activate, destroying the copy of the Cordier from the deck. And then that's going to activate the effect to summon out the copy of the Garunix. And when your opponent does anything here, we can then summon out the uh, Garunix, the bigger Garunix here. And we have different options. So we can, if we want to, use these two and then destroy the Garunix. But most people would try to do that with these two. I like to go for this instead. So I like to go for this here, the Garunix, and forces them to have an interaction with this to negate this, or else you're going to be able to pop off. So we're going to go effect, destroy the entire board, uh, destroying the copy of the Kieran. Then Kieran will activate the effect to summon out a copy of a card and destroy as well. So here we're going to summon out a uh, the Cordier, destroying one of our opponent's cards as well, one of their back rows. Then we're going to activate the effect of Volcanics, destroying this to then be able to search. We're going to search for a Kieran here. And then we're going to activate the effect of the big Garunix to summon out two other bodies. We're going to summon out the Ponix, and then we can summon out the other Garunix. And then we're going to see the Ponix effect can activate, letting us search for the Circle or another copy of the uh, Skybird, if that's what you want to. It's all coming up to you. And then if your opponent does anything here to try to destroy the Garunix, we can then chain the Kieran, destroying that, once again, summoning it here. And then you have a protection. So you have like a fairly big wall. You shouldn't be dying. Um, and then when this, during the standby phase, we're going to be seeing this going to activate, summoning itself out and destroying the entire board once again. So they have to end your turn. They have to either end their end you that turn uh, or be able to just lose their entire board to the Garunix. Because summon itself out, then wipe the entire field. It doesn't activate itself on summon, so it's kind of important since you're in the standby phase. Summon out, activate, blow everything up. And then we're going to see the Kieran effect once again going to activate. Summon another one. We're going to have the, the Garunix as well. So we're going to summon up the copy of the Garunix. Kieran's going to activate summoning. And we can summon up the Arvada, pop another card on the field. Um... And then we still have like the copy of Circle. We're going to be seeing this can activate the effect, destroying another copy. We can destroy the Arvada. Arvada can then bring out another body, bring out the Kieran here. 
And like once again, we have just so much for you to go for game. Like if they if we can't find a way to end up getting game through this, then really our opponent like we just board wipe their opponent. I don't know what they're playing. We're just gonna be able to survive a board wipe. Uh, and then being able to have like different negates. We popped three other cards during their turn. We popped another card during this turn. We blew up their entire board, and then we still have another monster negate on the field. Uh, so if they can play through that, then they're obviously playing the best deck on the format. This is going to be obviously for the pure Fire King. I can show you guys some test hands now, just because we've gone through a bunch of the combos and some different lines. So like the deck is very, very, uh, like, I don't say basic, but it's very fair. Like, the deck just feels uh, very compact, and, like, you exchange one for one, being able to destroy the cards on the field. Um, it just, it doesn't, like, blow up like we saw the Snake Eyes do. Like, one card doesn't equal so much. And your boards may not look like that much, but they're able to do quite a bit. So, dive on into the hand one, we're going to be seeing Cordier, Island, the Skyburn, a copy of Imperm, and a copy of Valor. So, this is going to be quite nice. And if you guys want to be seeing the deck profile, make sure you guys check that out tomorrow. We're going to be uploading a deck profile for you guys. It's going to be showing you guys off of this exact deck that we're playing right now. Uh, but this is super cool. So we have the one card Cordier and the Island. We also have a Skyburn for Interruption, being able to avoid those cards as well. And then we have two Hand Traps. If we were going second, we'd also have another copy of the Cordier. Not the best, of course, but still playable. So we have two Hand Traps. Let's say we're going second. We have another card in hand. We're going to say it's this one here. It's not going to matter. These cards can be dead. We're going to be able to play through two. If they can play through two Hand Traps, they're going to be going very well. We could just normal summon and then activate the effect of Skyburn to destroy as well if we wanted to. But we don't have another fire in this case, which is going to be kind of sucky. So you have to go island. Island effect, destroy this in the hand. And then we're going to be searching for the Garunix. We're going to go chain link one, Gar or yeah, chain link one, the Cordier, chain link two, Garunix, summon itself out. And then we're going to activate the effect destroying a copy of the Kieran. Kieran will then activate, bring this back out, activating the effect, destroying. That's going to let us search. We're going to search for the Ponix. We then normal summon Ponix, activate the effect. We could also have searched for a Arvada there if we wanted to. There wasn't really any, uh, like any significant changes that we would be able to do here. We can search for a Sanctuary just so we have a follow-up with the destruction of the big guy there. It's ultimately, again, up to you. We're going to play Sanctuary. And then we can just link up here if we want to into the Sunlight Wolf. Into Anima. And then we're going to activate Sunlight Wolf, adding back the Kirin. Now, we don't have the... Uh, we don't have a copy of the um arvada in the graveyard so we're not going to have that monster gate but we're going to have the same akiran uh plus the uh kieran plus the amboil board like we mentioned before so we're going to see princess be able to bring back out it doesn't matter what we bring out here at all uh we did not destroy opponents yet so we're going to bring that out and i want to link these two away for the amble whale and like once again we have a Pretty decent board. We have the Kirin, which can then be able to destroy the Amber Whale to bring out the copy of the Sunlight Wolf, which will then also trigger the uh, the Garunix. So like we have these two here, which are going to be setting. And like once again, I said it's not like the most powerful board, but we do have the Kirin and we have the Valor. So we have Valor, Imperm, and this. So like during your opponent's turn, they're able to do something. Uh, we can then go Kirin, destroy the Amber Whale, summon itself out. Amber Whale as well as the Sunlight Wolf will trigger, summoning it themselves out. Then we're gonna go Garunix effect destroying. We will destroy a uh, Arvada here just so that we have it in rotation. And then Arvada can trigger and summon another one out. So we can summon out the Ponix. Ponix can then search us for, we have the Skyburn already. So we can search for either another Skyburn or a circle for follow-up. And so we have these two in hand. We have these two interactions. When your opponent does anything, we can go up into the Eternity. Then we're going to go Eternity 1, Sunlight Wolf 2, adding back. We're going to add back. It doesn't really matter at this point. We can add back uh, the Cordier. Destroying these on the field. And then that's going to let us trigger the Amboil if we want to. We don't necessarily have to because we have Princess in the Graveyard as well. Uh, so we can trigger that. 
Um, but we also have Skyburn, which can then destroy this and one of our opponent's cards. And then that's going to be able to trigger the Hiang here to be able to bring back out two. We're going to bring back the Arvada as well as the Kirin. And then we have the Arvada to get any time as well, being able to destroy the Kirin. And then Kirin will activate the effect, summoning out another body and destroying a card. Uh, we can summon out this, destroy this if we want to. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we do here. We have essentially like so many follow-ups. We have two interruptions with the, within this. We have a monster negate. We destroyed their entire board with the uh, Eternity. We have one pop with this as well. So we popped three cards on their field. Um, we have a Veiler. We have an Imperm. We blew up their entire field as well. We have a monster negate. And uh, we added back, let's say, whatever we want to. And we still have the Princess as well to destroy. Let's say we have this on the field. Uh, we summoned off the Kirin and we destroyed a card. We still have the Princess whenever they continue to summon here. We're going to destroy the Garunix, summoning itself out. And then Garunix will be the trigger in the standby phase. And they do make a board that's going to get completely board wiped with the Garunix. So, you know, we still have these two for follow-up as well here, which is important to note that, like, you have so much follow-up in this deck. Like, your opponent is going to have to either kill you, OTK you, so they're going to have to be playing Tempi, and you're still going to have so many different interaction points with your opponent, you know, being able to stop uh, the Pydra, stopping the field spell, um, you know, make it so they have to go Kaiman, and then if you have any interruption in that, uh, they're going to be able to be losing to that, which is important as well. But yeah, so, like, you uh, you have a bunch of different abilities that you can um, you can do here. Like, this is just going to be, like, a showing you guys a different combo that you guys have. I can show you a second combo as well. So now that we're all back to shuffle up here, I'll be going in once again. Like, there's just, there's some lines where it's harder to make some certain cards. Like, we mentioned the Titanic Lab, or not Titanic Lab, but the Hope Harbinger. Um, like, it, it's kind of hard to make that sometimes unless you have, like, certain hands or you're playing it's like, a very spell-heavy deck. Like, you know, you're playing a brand, then obviously you can, like, uh, tilt towards that like going in once again we see a prosperity we are playing an imperm imperm garunix and an arvada so not the greatest hand obviously we mentioned you could if we didn't have a prosperity let's say it's one of some other random card it's upon us obviously that's a way better uh but yeah so let's pretend that is the prosperity i guess we're going to be prospering for six here just to pretend like we're not we don't know what the top deck is uh, if we're going second the Ponix would be our third. So we do have our sixth card. We do have two hand traps. Once again, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to try to always have those two hand traps in these uh, hands. Obviously, it's going to be like the most impactful. But if we're going first, we're going to Prosperity. We can banish six. Now, I'm going to be showing you guys a bit of the extra deck. Uh, you're going to be banishing, obviously, this Typhon. Uh, we're going to be banishing this. Um, the, we can banish that there. And like, there are other cards we can banish, like these. Uh, you want to keep a bunch of the targets in the extra deck. The extra deck's not final. This is going to be just the extra deck that we are playing for the first uh, for the first deck profile that you guys are going to be seeing. So we banish six here, and then we are going to be milling the top six. We see a Ponix, a Kieran, a Nib, an Ash, a Snow Rabbit, and a Veiler. So once again, we're showing you guys a bunch of different stuff. Like you see, there's four hand traps on the top six. Um, in this case, we will probably add the Ponix. Um, we're going to pretend like we're going first and we're going to normal some of the Ponix. If they have an interaction with this, it is going to be very unfortunate for us. We could have added the Kirin there, destroying the Arvada if we wanted to. It was an option that we can do. Uh, like we can pretend that we just want to play differently because we already have seen how the Ponix resolves. So let's add the Kirin here. We're going to normal summon the Arvada, activate the Kirin, destroying the Grunix, summoning itself out. Grunix will then be able to activate summoning itself out, activating the effect, destroying from the deck. Now, we can destroy the Cordier. Cordier will then be able to trigger, summoning out our... We also destroy the Barong if we wanted to, the Garunix. And we're going to link up into Sunlight Wolf. And then we can't link away into Anima at this point because we are... Uh, you know, unfortunately, not having a level one. We're going to link these two away for Mascarena. Sunlight Wolf's going to activate, adding us back that Kirin. And then we're going to go up into the Princess. Princess can bring back out the Arvada. And at that point, we're just going to kind of just pass turn on this. So we're going to set two cards. And, like, our board's not going to be crazy. 
Obviously, it's way better with the Ponyx. But like when you have a hand like that, it's not going to be the craziest hand in the world. Uh, you still have Arvada to be able to destroy the Princess. And then we have, obviously, the Kirin, which can destroy the Arvada. So we have a Monster Negate. We have two other Monster Negates. We also have the Garunish, which is going to summon itself out, activating the effect, destroying from the deck, destroying the Kirin. Then Kirin will be able to bring out another card here, being able to bring out, let's say, the Garunix, and then popping a card. So we have either another pop, or we can just uh, go for, um, you know, we'll probably pop one of their cards. And then if our opponent does anything here, we're going to be able to like play with a bunch of stuff. We still have the Princess, which can destroy the Garunix, summoning itself out and destroying one of their monsters. So if we have a Monster Negate, two pops, and then during the standby phase, once again, it's going to be able to come back and board wipe the entire field. Normally, this is not going to be on the field at this point. So they're going to be able to destroy everything. If Let's say they kept the Princess on the field because, like, if you look at this board, what are they going to destroy? So they want to get rid of this and this because if they destroy... Uh, if they don't get rid of this, when we bring this back out, it's going to be able to trigger, bring in the body. They want to destroy the princess because, the, you know, we have, we're going to be able to summon it back any other body. We haven't touched any Link Fours. So we're going to want to destroy that. Uh, and then most likely the Kirin. So we're going to leave the Groovers on the field. And then we're going to be able to summon this back out during the standby phase. Actually, the effect destroying this. And then that's going to also be able to trigger a bunch of other stuff as well. We have a draw for turn, which would be a Veiler, not the greatest. But just, you know, another possibility that we can do. The Groom is the trigger, summon itself out. You guys get the kind of the deal that we have here. You know, playing with those cards, our opponent has to kill us or else we're going to kill them. Yeah, that's like kind of like a worse combo. I'll show you guys one last combo, or a test hand here, just because I really like the deck. There are other variations you can play, like Dominus, uh, the new one, Dominus Impact or whatever it's called. Um... But we're, we're not playing because we are playing Nibiru and Ghost Ogre in the main deck. You can cut like Veilers and Nibs if you wanted to and then play the Impulse as well. I uh, would maybe Talents, but we're going to be diving in. We see a Sanctuary, a Nib, a Ponyx, a Skyburn, and a... So we have two normal summons here. And if we were playing going second, the top deck would be a Prosperity once again. Kind of crazy. But we have one Hand Trap here, which is going to be the Nibiru. A high impact Hand Trap, which is going to be quite nice. But... No matter how we kind of go here, we have two ways of playing. Where we can either store it off with a copy of Ponyx, or we can start off with the stuff. We're going to go activate the effect to search for Fire King Island. And then Island, I guess, yeah, kind of depends. Like, do you want to go Island effect first to put bait and out Nash? Or, you know, we can just normal summon this, activate the effect, destroy, and then be able to search for Kirin. And then we're going to be seeing the island destroy this. Search for a Garunix. And then Garunix, chain link one, or chain link one, Cordier, chain link two, Garunix. Garunix then going to activate destroying either the Barong or the Arvada. We're going to go for Arvada here. Arvada will then be able to activate, bring back out uh, the copy of Ponix here. Very important that we do that. And then we can link up. Or we can activate the Kirin if we wanted to as well. It, like, it all matters like how you want to play it. Uh, Ponyx will then be able to trigger. I forgot that we have not activated that effect yet. Which can then let us get a Circle or a Skyburn, depending on if you already have. Uh, we're going to search for the Circle. You can also add the second Skyburn if you wanted to. We are playing that in this build. Just so that you have like another form of interruption and your opponent doesn't necessarily know what's going to be there. Um, but you have, like again, like different lines. We don't need to add the Kirin back to the hand. We already have it there, so we can just go up into like an IP if we wanted to, and then go up into print or go up into Princess, and then Princess bring back out the Arvada, and like this is a good enough hand. You know, we can set these two, and then pass turn as well. We have like the Arvada destroy. Um, and then we're going to have the Kirin summon back. Oh, we're going to have this activation. And then this is going to activate the effect destroying from the deck. We can destroy the Barong for follow-up. And then whenever we activate a card, we can go like Kirin, destroy the Arvada, summon itself out. Arvada will activate the effect and bring out the Ponix. Uh, and then Ponix will be able to activate, or I guess it's negated the effects. So we can't activate that um, there. Which is, I guess, important. 
Uh, so like we wouldn't get the circle, I guess, in that case when we destroyed the Arvada. But like it's it's still pretty pretty fine to play with. Like you know you have this being able to summon back out wherever the big guy is. I thought I just had it, and then this is gonna activate destroying this and the entire field, and then we have the princess to be able to destroy this, summon it out, activating the effect, being able to bring out the Kirin. And the Ponyx. Now we get the Ponyx effect to finally search. Search for the second copy of Skyburn or the Circle. And then we have still the Skyburn being able to destroy two of their cards. Um, and then being able to activate the effect of Kirin. Summon back out once again. Being able to summon out like this. And let's say uh, the Arvada. Doesn't necessarily matter. And then we can go like destroy this as well if we don't want to destroy one of the cards on their field. Well, there's just different options that we can do, obviously. With one so yeah, you can't search for the circle there with the first first pawns because it is negated off the Arvada. But other than that, you know, it's it's pretty pretty fun to play. Like if you look at how the deck kind of runs, it's just like a full monster mash uh, with a bunch of like cards that gets you other cards. I really do enjoy the deck. I think it's gonna be quite nice. And with this card here, it definitely changed it up, making the deck a lot more interesting. Well, if you guys want to see more content like this, make sure you stay stay tuned. Like the video as well as comment. Let me know what you guys think. The deck profile will be up tomorrow at 4 o'clock at the same time this video came up, uh, depending on where you are at the world. Don't forget to stay safe. Peace.